Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today the church remembers St. Matthias the Apostle. We know close to virtually nothing about him. Besides our New Testament passage for today, the Bible doesn't speak about St. Matthias at all. However, thanks to historians from the time, we can speculate with rather good accuracy, though not know for sure, is that he was martyred for his faith and teaching. The reason that this is not known for sure is because the historians argue over the method of execution and where he was laid to rest. Also, the area of his ministry isn't known, and it's for the same reason. The historians argue regarding it. So what do we know about this apostle? What we know for certain is that he was an apostle. He took Judas's place among the apostles after Judas's suicide and followed Christ during his entire earthly ministry, from his baptism by John the Baptist to our Lord's ascension. As an apostle, he spread the gospel of Christ. He was a courageous man, as can be seen in our New Testament reading. You see, in this time between the ascension of Christ and Pentecost, all those who had followed Christ were hiding because of their fear of being rounded up and executed like Christ by their enemies. Yet even after Matthias was chosen for apostleship, and there was still this really big fear, he said, yes, I'll join you. This took a lot of strength, faith, and courage, don't you think? If we fancy ourselves as modern-day disciples, like St. Matthias, then why are we so nervous to share our faith with other people? Think about this for a second. The worst that could happen to us for preaching the gospel is that we lose a friend, or are called a name, or falsely accused of believing something. But for the disciples of St. Matthias' time, they were sent to the arenas, where they were devoured by lions, tigers, and hyenas that were starved for this very purpose. Or maybe they were thrown to the gladiators where they were killed. Or maybe they faced the same execution as our Lord, crucifixion. Why are we so timid when it comes to speaking of Christ crucified with the people around us when the consequences are so minimal compared to the consequences then? In public, we don't talk about Christ. It takes a lot of courage to do that. It's possible that we just don't want to lose our friends. Maybe we're shy, but especially shy about talking about our faith and Christ because we are afraid of what might be done to us or said about us. Maybe we are in school and we don't want to risk getting expelled for saying something that somebody else might take as hateful. There are any number of reasons why we might think, feel that we can't talk about Christ verbally. But what if we talked about him by the way that we live our life? We do that pretty well, don't we? Well, actually, we don't. Do you think that the way you live your life right now shows Christ to those around you? Say you're out in public and you're getting ready to eat them eat your lunch? Do you pray before you eat? You see a classmate searching through their backpack, frantically trying to find a writing utensil for the test that you're both about to take, but they can't. Do you lend them one of your own, or do you keep it to yourself because it's yours? You're out getting the mail from your mailbox, and you see your neighbor crying. Do you go over and try to comfort them? Or do you just walk on by because your time is more precious in other areas? But the truth behind all of this is that we are self-centered people, thanks to our sinful nature. We don't want to be embarrassed. We don't help or comfort people because it takes something away from us. So when we have been called to preach Christ like St. Matthias, but remain timid in our words and actions, 
we do not fill our calling as Christ's disciple, disciples, right? And as such timid people who are afraid to speak about Christ and to live a Christian life, it is hard for us to understand what Christ is saying when he speaks of taking up his yoke. Many years ago now, I had no idea what a yoke even was. So I went and I asked my dad, because he grew up on a farm. Well, a yoke is a piece of farm equipment that was used for hooking two oxen together in order to pull a plow through the dirt or to pull a heavy Conestoga wagon on the Oregon Trail. Many times when a yoke was used, an older ox was paired with a younger one so that the younger could learn from the older. In Christ's time, this would have been a very common item and would have been understood by the people. But today, it is not all that common. But with this understanding and knowledge, the meaning of the text is brought forth quite nicely. In verse 29, Christ says to take up his yoke and to learn from him, because he is gentle and lowly in heart, and his burden is light. When you confess your sins and give your worries and burdens over to Christ, he takes them upon his shoulders and gives you his own yoke, that is, the forgiveness of your sins. You see, when you receive the forgiveness of sins, your soul receives the rest that Christ proclaims and promises. Christ took the burden of the, con of the consequences of your sin upon his shoulders, the shoulders whose burden was light, and bore each and every one of your sins to the cross and grave. Not all of you have the bold courage that St. Matthias did. But you know, there were 118 other people there who were not apostle material in one way or another. Yet those people were not excluded from the salvation that Christ offered and still offers to all his disciples. So when you do not take that opportunity to speak about Christ to your family, your friends, or your neighbors, Christ forgives you. When you don't live up to the life of a Christian in helping people, caring about them, or acknowledging that you are a Christian to the world by praying in public, Christ forgives you. Christ didn't die for the times in your life that you act like a disciple. But for the times that you don't, the times that you sin, not only did Christ die on the cross as the sacrifice for your sins, but he lived a holy life, a perfect life, a life according to the commandments of God. You are forgiven because through your baptism, you are clothed in Christ's righteousness. His life becomes your life. His holy life makes you holy before the eyes of God. When Christ says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, he is inviting all of you to come to him, to his cross, and see what he has done for you, that your burdens may be removed. And this also is an invitation to become a disciple of Christ. The Greek word for disciple and the Greek word for learn have a common root and meaning. To be a disciple of Christ means to be Christ's disciple is to learn from him. What you learn from him is that he is gentle and humble in heart. Because he is gentle in heart, he receives you, a sinner, and forgives you all of your sins. And because of his humility in heart, he took up his cross on your behalf, that you would receive the forgiveness of sins. Our New Testament reading today talks about St. Matthias, an apostle of Christ, an apostle of whom we know very little, but what we do know is that he was a man of bold courage, a man who knew the meaning of this passage and who lived it in his life, who spent about three years with Christ, from Christ's baptism to his crucifixion and to his ascension into heaven, who preached Christ crucified and who tried to live his life as a disciple of Christ. 
St. Matthias was a sinful human being, just like all of us. So, even though we might not preach Christ, nor live our life as a Christian should, you all have the blessing of being a disciple of Christ. This discipleship is that yoke which Christ invites you to take up, and the forgiveness of your sins makes the burden of discipleship light. And this forgiveness was obtained through the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Amen.